Morning, welcome back to The Football Show. Jamie Carragher and Gary Neville are here. Now, before the break, we were looking back eight years ago on this day when Chelsea won the Champions League. Seven years ago on this day, it was Jamie Carragher's last game as a footballer. It was against QPR. What are your memories of the day? What was it like walking out? Uh, listen, it was lovely. And, you know, thank you to her QPR for the... Uh... You know, guard of honour, whatever you call it. Lovely to get the kids involved. I don't think this was the 23rd minute. I think this was actually towards the end and the uh, the second half <laughs> would have come off. And listen, just listen, there's been lots of players at Liverpool who were better than me and who never got that type of send off or through whatever reason. So I, I, I count myself very lucky and privileged really that I was able to finish almost on my terms really and get a great send off from the crowd. Apart from anything else, it was, it was the longevity of it. How many games did you play in total? Uh, 737 I played, but I, I don't know what Gary's like or what other players are like, but at the end of my career, I'm, <clears throat> I always think it should have been more. I'm like that with medals I got, or, you know, I, I was very lucky that I won a few medals, but I always think it wasn't enough. I always look at the games and think I'm close to 750. I think it, injuries I got or a stupid suspension or something like that. But I know if I'd got over 750, I'd be like, well, why didn't I get 800? So that's just the way I always was, really. So I always think when you do something yourself, yeah, it's nice to look back and you can be proud of different things. But I think when you, you do something yourself, you don't think it's that special because you did it yourself. Do you know what I mean? You're always looking at someone else and they go, that, that was well done. That was fantastic. That's amazing. But when, uh, obviously, 737 is, I know it's a high number in terms of playing games, certainly for Liverpool, but I don't think it's anything special because... I did it. <laughs> you know, that's the best way to try and explain it. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting because you were, were you looking at Ian Callahan, who does hold the record number of appearances, and you're just second behind him. Were you looking at how many appearances he made at any stage and thinking, I, I could do that? Well, I, I did look at it, but it was always one of those that was impossible to get to. And I always used to joke with Ian Callaghan when I saw him that he must have counted five sides with Bill Shankly Monday to Friday because I just don't know how it's possible. <laughs> To get to 850 odd games, it's just it's unbelievable. I mean, there probably was no squad rotation then, but I, I just you try and work it out how they how they get to that number. I mean, I, I was very lucky with injuries, really, and, and I didn't miss too much football. He must have been exactly the same. But as I said, he's he's possibly the nicest man to ever wear a Liverpool shirt. So I think it'd be a sad day if anyone ever does beat him. So I'm I'm more than happy to have uh, Ian Callaghan number one and me uh, me just behind him. I don't think he was allowed to be injured at the time that, that he was playing either. I don't, I don't think that was ever an option. But, but that, that, you, you made that decision. You knew when you were coming to the end of, of your career, you knew it was going to be your last game. Was it important to you that it was done on your terms in a way? Yeah, I knew, I knew a year and a half beforehand when I was finishing. I, uh, obviously, I spoke, your dad was the manager then and I had a year to go. Uh, I spoke to your dad. Your dad then was obviously brought Brendan Rodgers and he was he was taken out the job by the American owners. And the first chat I had with Brendan Rodgers was, I've got a year to go on my contract. And I was I was very wary of Brendan Rodgers coming in because he was only three or four years older than me. And I certainly didn't want him to feel threatened or under pressure by me because I wasn't Jamie Carragher in his peak, if you like. He, I was 35 and I, and I didn't want him to feel pressure as if... he. He had to pick me or I was going to cause him a problem. So my first chat was him was, listen, I'm not your first choice. Sagan and Skater are above me. I'm here to help you. Uh, I'll play your Open League games, Carlin Cup games, but I am finishing at the end of the season. But as I said, I'll try and help you as much as possible. He actually offered me a role on the uh, on the staff after the first time I'd, 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 I'd spoke to him, really. And it really excited me because I'd got a little bit down the year before when I wasn't playing as much. Not so much down, but for me, playing every week was a massive part of my life and I found it tough. And that's why I decided I wanted to finish at the end of my contract. But to actually mix the playing with the coaching would have been brilliant for me for 12 months. And that was something I wanted to do with your dad, but obviously, unfortunately, he lost his job. So, But next time I, I spoke to Brendan Rodgers, he changed his mind and brought Mike Marsh, which, you know, which was fine. He, I, I had no coaching experience, but I always wonder where it would have taken me, really, if that decision would have stayed. But I, I decided I was going to go. It's difficult. I don't know if Gary feels the same, but... I think when you're so emotionally attached to a club uh, and you've been there such a young age, I always think, how how do you leave Liverpool or how do you leave Manchester United, those big clubs? And normally it's very difficult to move on and, and do something better. People may think of the 
the Spanish giant, if you like, Steve McManaman done that, and he was a local player, and I always felt it wasn't received that well. And I also didn't want to play where I was nowhere near good enough for Liverpool, and I was actually hating the team and costing them goals and, and making big mistakes. And a case of when the team sheet came out, Liverpool supporters were saying, oh, Carragher's playing. I never, I never wanted that. I always think at a big club when you've been there and it, it means so much, you've got to leave at the right time. And I think, I think I just, I just got it right. Uh, really, I just timed it right. And it's nice when people say, "Oh, if you'd have stayed the next year, Liverpool would have won the league." I don't actually believe that for one second. But it's, it, but when people actually say that to me, it tells me that I did make the right decision to actually go at the right time. Yeah, and it tells you how well you're thought of by by those supporters. For you, Gary, it happened in a in a different way. But Jamie's talked about that sense of trying to sort of untangle your life from this huge club that's been a part of your life since you've been a, a kid. How hard is that? Yeah, I actually had planned it as Jamie had uh, that I was going to finish at the end of the season. I was actually coming agreed to come to Sky, and I like Jamie had been offered a, a job in the in the coaching of the youth side of things, uh, but. From my point of view, I finished the previous season to when I did retire, and I had a really good last ten or twelve games. Conned maybe the maybe me, maybe the manager David Gill into thinking, well, look, there's one more season in me, and I'd made my mind up. I was leaving, I was finishing, um, and so I finished. If I'd have finished then, it would have been perfect. And I actually went on and took another season, and that last season, you know, obviously, it finished in January. I retired. That January, this was my last game. It was an absolute disaster. It was easy for me, Kelly, because I had that injury when I was 32, 32 and a half. So my, three, my last three and a half years were disrupted heavily by uh, by injury. Nowhere near the level of the other players. I was amongst an incredible team. You know that team that I mentioned the other day with Rooney and Tevez, Vidic, Ferdinand, Van der Sar, Evra. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo it was an incredible team and I every day felt it in training that I was inferior and Jamie mentioned about being sort of like a little bit embarrassed or letting the team down in that last six to eight months that I was at the club I felt embarrassed I didn't want to be picked I knew that I was a risk I went out on the pitch and in training every single day I was looking at Raphael I was looking at the other lads the energy the speed of the game it had shifted beyond me and it was obvious for me to see and not even my experience really was covering the sort of yards, and you can't get there, you can't get there. And you started taking up bad positions to sort of like, you think about the game at Westbrook, a horror show of a performance from me for 62 minutes. How I didn't get sent off, how I didn't cost us more goals. The same, I think, at Stoke in the game I'd played before that in November. And the same at Everton, where we were 3-1 up and actually we finished 3-3 and the two goals came down my side. So for me, I had no choice. I, I was finished, I was done. <laughs> At 31, 32, I, would, I was never going to play for another club. So if, you, if United had said to me, Sir Alex would have said to me at 32, you know, Gary, you're finished, you're done. I would have retired at that age. I was never playing for another club once I got past my 30th birthday. It just wouldn't have felt right for me. Well, I'd like to say that we're all glad that you ended up here, but I think that would just make us all feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and be alive. Uh, 